The sporting life was a curious mixture that was born of the streets, wherein the poorest of the poor mixed with this new clerk class. And the clerks, when they went to the streets, dressed in the manner of what was called the dandy. The dandy was both parallel to this working culture and opposite to. It was hyper, hyper dignified with all the most uh, useless forms of trapping on the clothes. The dandy was elegant and attired and pristine, but also engaged in the hyper-violent pursuits of the working class in New York. The clothes that the dandy would wear would be almost too fashionable for work, too tight for work. And by the very tightness of the clothes, you knew they were not putting in a real day's work, that they were dressing simply to look good rather than actually accomplish anything. In a popular semi-autobiographical book of the time, Leaves from the Diary of a Broadway Dandy, the author writes, I am a rich man's son, yet I prefer to be in full one of the people in every sense of the word. They may have had polished manners and the ways of gentlemen, but they were the fast boys of young America. They were full of the contradictions that were born of this new market society, of the inequality and equality made possible by being able to buy the clothes of someone who was higher than you in station. This sporting life was a world of a male consumer society, and it was in it that there was a mixture of different classes. It was ordered not by social position or networks, but by cash. Could you afford to buy access? That was its only ticket for entry. And so it was something that was rather new in this period, the mixing of different sorts altogether. And this world was a world of violence, uh, where Bowery boys, who were the sort of rough sort, dandies um, on their uh, milling about, could mix together in racing and gambling, cockfighting and boxing, saloon drinking. And the newspapers both denounced it and celebrated it at the same time with titles of articles like Rake Sporting Whip, Flash Libertine. Words that are so archaic, it's hard to understand what they mean. But in fact, we're all about the sort of defiance of this convention of, so of the social order. It was a bachelor ideal of single men on the loose in the city spending money, whether you're going from the boxing ring to the theater or to the brothel. The sporting life openly mocked the moral order of the families from which these people had come. If on the one hand, the new uh, industrial order had produced wealth and prosperity that produced things like the parlor in the homes of the new genteel, it also produced at the same time a reaction and possibility for these wage workers of the city to reject that moral order, to reject the widespread religious revivalism of the 1820s, that is, the Second Great Awakening. So let's now actually think about what you could actually spend your money on, both for these clerks and for sailors, as part of this blossoming, trade-driven New York City.